Okay, guys, let's take a moment to um, settle in. I'll, you know what? I'll let you guys look up the Bible verse first. Um, I see Jennifer turning to the good old Bible, real Bible. So Numbers 13, 25 to 14, 25. Okay, you're good, awesome. Let's take a moment of silence, guys. Today is gonna be um, an interesting time for all of us. So let's take a moment to rest and just be present with God who is present with us. Let us pray tonight that we will read the Word of God intelligently, but also uh, with all of our heart. Uh, And in addition to that, this may sound contradictory, but let us ask the Word of God to read us. That it is scanning us, if you will, and it's reading our soul and reading our life so that we may experience what the Scripture is trying to say to us. So let us pray tonight that we will read the word of God with our heart and our and our uh, mind, but let's have the word of God read us and tell us what it finds. So let us pray together. Father, I pray that we will employ our mind, but also uh, we are afraid to intellectualize uh, the scripture that is given to us. The spirit, uh, the the word of God is living and active. It has an element in which is not like the other words, just like the words that were spoken to uh, create things in the beginning of time. We believe that it is not just ideas written down, but it is active and it is living. And it has power to uh, bring flesh back on the bone, on on dry bones. So God, we pray that we will read your scripture with uh, deep reverence and a childlike faith and hope that this will shape us today and it will redeem us more and more into the image of your son. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just in case you don't have the scripture, I'm going to share it here on the screen. But if you have your Bible with you, uh, actually, you know what? Sharing it here is not so good idea because I have to scroll it down. But what I want to do is um, give you guys maybe seven minutes. Yeah. That's very odd and precise, but seven minutes, six minutes to read this text. And, um, oh no, 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 no. You know, what I decided to do was not that. I'm going, I changed my mind. I forgot, I I forgot that I changed my mind. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to read uh, chunks, uh, like a big chunk at a time. 
and then we're going to write our response on the chat in the chat so uh, basically what we're looking for tonight is what is a sin uh, and brokenness and um, a fallenness that you see about humanity in, in this text so I'm going to read um, chunks of it I'm going to read a big chunk at a time and you're just going to comment on the side and and um, should we discuss through that first anyway so I'm just going to read it you write it as I read it or when I pause and then we will just keep repeating that process okay I hope I didn't confuse you <laughs> okay so whether you have your Bible with you or not uh, I and you just want to follow along or just want to listen that's up to you but this is the first chunk of tonight's reading and it, the reading comes from uh, numbers chapter 13 verse 25 to 14 uh, chapter 14 verse 25 at the end of 40 days they returned from spying out the land and they came to moses and aaron and all the congregation of the people of israel in the wilderness of haran kadesh they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They told them, we came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. However, however the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and Amorites dwell in the hill country. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and all along the Jordan. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are of great height. And there we saw Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come from the uh, Nephilim. And we seem to ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seem to them. Okay, let us share um, some of the sins and brokenness in this text. Okay, falsifying report to Israelites out of their own fear and lack of trust in God. And that was the majority, right? 10 out of 12. I hope everything will be Oh boy. Gosh, but can you hear me? Oh. I think there's a way to mute everyone, but I'm not that good with this. Here we go. 
Yeah, anything else? No worries, no worries. It happens. Do you guys recall how long um, Moses went up to the mountain when he received the Ten Commandments? It was, where is that cool spotlight? There we go. It was 40 days. So there is a, a sense of uh, 40 days in which to receive the, uh, the the law of God. And that same sacred days are now used uh, sort of in, in waste and in, in falsifying perhaps and also uh, exaggerating perhaps and uh, bringing a lot of fear and bad report. Okay, so we have, we are not able to go up against the people. Let's see if I can bring this over. We're not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. They are depending on themselves to take over the land. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you caught that on, uh, caught on to that. Because um, what they're truly saying is we can only get, we, we are, we're able to get in if we are strong, it's not about God, it's about me, what I can handle and what I am capable of. So, you know, there's a sin beneath that sin. And, and let me just um, see if you can uh, answer this question. So they, they're saying, you know, this all depends on me. What is the sin beneath that sin? What is causing that idea to emerge? So what is a deeper sin that floats the idea that, you know, um, we, it, it's, the fight is dependent on me. The possession of the land is really depends on my performance. What do you think the sin is beneath that sin? Belittling God, yes, but that's the outward effect. What is the affect? What is um, what is pushing that? What is ho what is hosting that? Hoisting that sin of it all depends on me. Okay, so that's one of them. God is now with us; He does not care. But that's still sort of the outer perimeter, right? So that's like. It depends on me, uh, and God doesn't care because what's going on. Thinking you have control, yes. And if you were to put that into one word, that starts with letter P. I, I mean, that's one of the options. It has to do with Lion King, and starts with letter P, and rhymes with bride. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't you wish school was like this? You know, they just keep giving you hints and clues. Anyway, it, it's really the pride and the self-sufficiency and, and self-reliance. So thank you for bringing that up and catching that. Okay, uh, is, is there anything else? Oh, oh, I missed one, not putting God first. Yeah, those are all it. But the reason why I want to go into what is sin beneath the sin is because later on, as we get into maybe on Friday, what do we do once we identify our giant? What do we do once we identify our sins and our weakness, our brokenness? Uh, that This kind of uh, meditation is, is absolutely crucial understanding sin beneath the sin, okay? Because we need proper diagnosis. All right. And anything else from uh, verse 30 on?
there's a contrast of the fruit that they brought, the, the bountiful, beautiful, luscious fruit that they brought versus what they're talking about here. That the land devours its inhabitants. So they're not looking at the resource and the blessing of the land, uh, the fruitfulness of the land, but they see themselves as the food. And as I shared with you on Sunday, uh, they see themselves as the smallest unit of possible protein intake, which is a grasshopper. And if uh, some of the annex seems like, you know, some of the taller giganticism or gigantism people were living in the land like Goliath, and they see that they see themselves as uh, not only food, uh, not only uh, like a snack, but not even a snack. And so they have very low image and opinion of themselves because as you can see later, they have a very low opinion of God who brought them out from the land of Egypt. So self identity is strongly attached to the identity that you have, the image of God that you have in your mind. And they are closely linked. So I'm going to move on to chapter 14. Then all the congregation raised a loud cry, and the people wept that night. And all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole congregation said to them, would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in this wilderness? Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become a prey. Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to one another, let us choose a leader and go back to Egypt. So there are lots of interesting sin and brokenness here. Oh, let's share, <laughs> in case you want to share. Grumbling, big time. Yeah, there's lack of appreciation for the work of God. So this is their 10th uh, complaint, 10th grumbling. And if you recall, God performed 10 miracles for them, to, uh, 10 uh, plagues to get them out. So they're not appreciative at all. Making God smaller than he actually is. Uh, if you can expand on that, uh, please tell us a little bit more. I think I know what you mean, but if you can just expand that a little bit more. And also they're picking assured death over their assumption of death that is about to happen. Yeah, that's a, it's a sort of a weird um, logical step. And it kind of shows their uh, mental state at this moment. We should have died over there and then, you know, possibly dying in the future <laughs> through a battle. So there's some uh, mental dissonance. And thank you for elaborating. Uh, they are dragging him down, him as in God. They're dragging God down to their level. Their smallness, forgetting who he is, provider, good father, savior, etc. Yep. Thank you for uh, expanding on that. Yes, and, and that's uh, one of the big things here, um, that they're not only blaming God, but they absolutely question God's integrity and his love and his faithfulness and his journey with them. They have built a tabernacle, a very uh, 
detail-oriented tabernacle that teaches them about who God is and his faithfulness to them, but yet they doubt him. Um, they don't trust him. Like he has brought out in verse 3, Uh, why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? So they're saying, you know, we're here because of um, God wants to kill us. He, he was never, he was nefarious and he was unsavory from the start. Uh, and, and so they don't trust in this God at all. And, and you get the sense that Israelites at this point is trying to get a sense of who this God is. And they're really not too sure about this Yahweh character. And um, yeah, so they really doubt him at this point. Yeah, and they're quick to doubt when things are not in their control. And, and just also, let's see if I can get their, their grumbling. They're um, not, they're, they don't trust in God anymore. They, God's character is uh, in, in doubt. And the ideal of um, our wives and our little ones will become a prey. So the ideal of something eating is also getting played out again. That they are just really nothing but food and that's all they are. And, and they use their children and, and, and wives as an excuse to really view God in a certain light, in, in a negative light. They seem to be in constant search of new idols, golden calf, new leader. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I was going to gloss that over, but you're right. So what else is happening here that is um, they're looking for a new leader. They're not happy with Moses either, guys. Uh, they're not happy with God. They're not happy with Moses, and, and they're looking for a new one. And there's one important thing here that you guys, uh, no one has mentioned yet. What is that? Well, there, there's two. One is here. Da, 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 verse two, right? And there's another one in verse four, right here. Now, for those of us, for yeah, let's let's write it down for those of us uh, who's who's going to be watching this later on. So, what other sins and brokenness in these short verses? There are two more. Okay, let, let me think of uh, uh, like a dead giveaway clues, uh, but I can't think of any, so I'll just say it. Um, that, would, that we had died in the land of Egypt. I guess we covered this a little bit, or more or less, that they would rather have died in the land of Egypt. Uh, the, the iron, well, not irony, but the contradiction there is that they wanted to be out of the land of Egypt. They, they cried out to God, just in a similar way that they are, you know, crying out to the Lord right now. They cried out to him first and said, we want out of here. We want to go somewhere else. And, and that was in the land of Egypt. But now that they're out and they have to participate into this life of faith, they don't, they rather, and, and, and they would have much rather died in the land of Egypt. And here, that they want to go back to Egypt. So there's um, broke the sin is that not only they don't want to go in, but they want to reverse and go back to where they were where they're from. Okay. Oh wow, we have a, we have a lot to go. So uh, chapter fourteen, verse five. I'll just start reading again. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of congregation of the people of Israel, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes and said to all the congregation of people of Israel, the land which we passed through to spy it out is an exceedingly good land. 
if the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their protection is removed from them. and The Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Then all the congregations said to stone them with stones. But the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of the meeting to all the people of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will this people despise me? And how long will they not believe in me? In spite of all the signs that I have done among them, I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them. And I will make you a nation greater and mightier than they. Okay, now, from verse 5 to verse 11, uh, verse 12, what are some of the sins of Israelites? Yep, the congregation tried to stone Joshua and Caleb. And this wasn't, um, and, and I'm just basing it on the commentators here. They're saying that is, this is not just the uh, anger of the mob, but they have some sort of ju uh, judicial power to kill Joshua and Caleb. So this wasn't just a passionate thing. This was kind of a, um, law, what was that, the legislature kind of thing, where they are seriously trying to execute by law for the good news that Joshua and Caleb has brought to them. Okay, so their sense of justice and logic is out the door, because they're so afraid. So that could be one of the, one of the additional sins. But what about verse 11 and 12, uh, or verse 11, I should say? How does God interpret the reaction of Israelites? So this is a sin beneath the sin that I was talking about. Yeah, essentially, um, their lack of trust uh, is it's not just being interpreted as dis, uh, them despising them, but they actually, uh, what, what they did was they actually despised God for bringing them out, for getting them to commit, the, commit to this journey. Very despised that they had to live a certain way. And sometimes this happens with teenagers um, as they go through their, you know, Christian walk. They despise the fact that they're Christian and they despise the fact that they have to live a certain way and they, they can't participate in certain things. Uh, so there, there's, there's a hatred that they have for God and that they, they do not believe in God in spite of all the things that God has done among them. So signs and wonders were wonderful at the time, but it's no guarantor of a long-term faith. They just simply took it as something that was neat. Uh, it gratified their spiritual curiosity, but ultimately it did not lead them into having a loving and genuine relationship with God. But they hate God uh, at the sign of once again, a trial and difficulty. So I'm going to continue to read, and hopefully we can um, finish this on time. But Moses said to the Lord, 
Then the Egyptian will hear of it, for you have brought up this people in your might uh, from among them. And they will tell the inhabitants of this land, they have heard that you, O Lord, are in the midst of this people. For you, O Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stand over them. And you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you kill this people as one man, and the nation who have heard your fame will say, it is because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land that he swore to give to them, that he has killed them in the wilderness. And now please, let the power of the Lord be great, as you have promised, saying, the Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children to the third and the fourth generation, please pardon the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of your steadfast love, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt until now. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but truly as I live, and as all the, the earth shall fill with the glory of the Lord, none of the men who have seen my glory and my signs that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and yet have put me to the test these ten times, and have not obeyed my voice, shall see the land that I swore to give to their fathers. And none of those who despise me shall see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land into which he went, and his descendants shall possess it. Now since the Amalekites and Canaanites will in the valleys, turn tomorrow and set out for the wilderness by the way to the Red Sea. Amen. So tonight, uh, I want to conclude this by saying that um, there's grace, there's a, there's a great discipline and punishment that is brought forth due to uh, the way that Israelites have despised God. But then there's also great grace and forgiveness and reconciliation that took place because of Moses. But ultimately, God honors their choice to go back to the land of Egypt, uh, yeah, to the land of Egypt by turning them to the wilderness by the way of, to the Red Sea. So God doesn't drive them back into Egypt but he does honor their choice. And by one, um, having them not enter into the promised land, and two, turning them to the direction of the Red Sea. And, and that is um, the unfortunate and, and tragic outcome of this story. That people experienced the grace of God, but they weren't able to possess it because of their their fear and, and the way that they despise God. So uh, there are a lot of things that we talked about tonight, uh, the sins that you have identified. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy all of these things somehow, some way. And um, yeah, I, there, there's, there must be a way to send this to my Google box or to my computer, I don't know. Anyway, um, I'll do that later. But I, I want us to think about uh, the sin that is present in this text. And also tomorrow, uh, on Wednesday, I want to talk about some of these sins as our own personal giants that we ourselves have a difficult time facing. And, and because of that, we, we turn away from God to a point where we despise God. So, and then on Friday, let's talk about how we can deal with some of these giants, the metaphorical, spiritual um, uh, giants in our life, so that we can actually step into and enjoy the fruit of the promised land. Okay? All right. Uh, any questions or thoughts before I close? No, no, no. Okay, then let us pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. 
we have identified many sins and the problems and brokenness that is that are present in this uh, that is present in this text. Uh, but truth be told, God, some of those are also ours, but we just don't know. We think that someone else's problem and someone else's issues, and this will never happen to us. But God, I pray that you will, um, as we go journey through this this week, you'll help us not only ident uh, identify with this uh, story, but to make it ours by have it land in a specific place in our life. And as it does that, God, I pray that we will able to slay and face our own giants. That we may live in the blessings and, and the promises that you have made for our lives through Jesus Christ. So God, I pray that uh, we know that we can't do this on our own. And, and, and the moment we do that, we, we are saying that we are the one, we are, we are God. But God, I pray that we will trust in the work of Christ as we move forward and uh, bless every one of us here that we can think about these things as the, week, as the days uh, progress. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Tomorrow. Bye, Daryl. Bye, Jack Day. <laughs> bye. bye, everyone. See you Wednesday. Okay, bye.